going to have an honest conversation about NBA 2K18 for Switch. And again, I apologize. I'm still sick. I'm still recovering. I still have a sore throat. Uh, so bear with me. So I was going to review NBA 2K18 for Switch. It was uh, my number one goal to do today. And I put a lot of work into it, actually. I had recorded a ton of gameplay. You're seeing some of it right now. Um, and I realized that I don't feel it's appropriate to review this game because I spent over half of my written review just talking about getting the game working uh, and then just about differences between it and the other consoles. And it made me realize that I don't think it's appropriate to review this game on Switch uh, because there isn't a prior version of the game released on the platform or even released on the Wii U uh, unless you want to date back to 2K13. Uh, to really review it. As this is an annualized franchise, it makes more sense to review it based on the predecessor. So again, if there's an NBA 2K19 on Switch next year, that game to me makes more sense to review than this one. However, I did still want to talk about it because some new details came out today and obviously I did some of my own experimenting and it's it's hard to recommend NBA 2K18 unless you're like me and you love sports and you love sports simulation games, you love the NBA, and you want to take it on the go. And I say that because the Switch is quickly becoming not an ideal platform. Now, my experience installing the game, which I bought the digital version at midnight, is uh, interesting. You can technically download and install it on the internal storage. However, you cannot you know, load the game up because you need 5.1 gigabytes allotted for save files. Okay, fine. So I put an SD card in, hoping that, or micro SD card, hoping that, that I could put my save file in there. Nope. You have to install to the SD card and put your save file on the system. It's a really dumb setup. I don't know if that's the fault of Nintendo or the fault of 2K. Somewhere along the lines, people should be able to choose, pick and choose where they want their save files and where they want the game because I would love the game on the internal storage to reduce load times versus having it on an SD card that can't keep up. <clears throat> well, that's besides the point. Uh, what's interesting is that each save file takes 5.1 gigabytes, and that's each save file. So every time you start a new profile, every time you start a new, uh, my, you know, my career, a new uh, season, 5.1, 5.1, 5.1. That can add up in a hurry. You have five save files. That's 25 gigs. There goes all of your internal storage just for save files. So. Um, I don't know if that's the way it is on other platforms. I don't remember it being that way on my Xbox One last year. But uh, kind of interesting. I'm hoping that that gets patched. I don't think they need 5.1 gigabytes per save file. Maybe 5.1 allotted total for as many saves as people want. Uh, 5.1 is a lot for the data that it has to save. I, I don't think that that's really necessary. I'm hoping that that gets fixed. But there was things about this game that I applauded in the past. I talked about how NBA 2K18 is the ideal way that third-party ports should happen on Switch. And I made a big video about it. It did pretty well. Uh, and it seemed that a lot of people were interested in how 2K18 handled their Switch port. And let me say this right now. Barring, you know, visual aesthetic choices or personal preferences in different art styles, NBA 2K18 on Switch is quite literally the most visually impressive game in the Switch's library. Uh, it is, beyond a doubt, fantastic. Yes, it's lacking in some anti-aliasing. Yes, it doesn't run at native 1080p. Yes, uh, there is some uh, downgrades in the shadows that are very noticeable at times, uh, especially in the My Career mode. But that aside... It is stunning. Uh, here I'm showing some, some gameplay back and forth of the Xbox One version and the PlayStation 4 version and the Switch version in the, the beginning of my career. And you'll notice that the Switch version visually is... Mm, like, it, it's right there. Uh, when they said they were pushing the Switch to its absolute maximum... I can kind of believe it. My Switch, when I was playing this game, the fan was blasting at full blast the entire time I was in any sort of uh, gameplay or cutscene situation. Uh, not so much on the menus, of course, but of course menus don't take up that much. So, it, yeah, it pushes the Switch hardcore. And 
the fact that outside of anti aliasing some shadow work that it's almost i you know and obviously resolution it's almost identical to the xbox one and playstation 4 visually is just an impressive feat and that's a lot of what i was basing my praise for 2k on is that you know what yeah they sacrifice in frame rates but they went for the visual aspect that's going to appeal to to a broader audience and i was all up on that train and now i've played it and i admit it's playable it's fine i've gotten used to it uh but the dip in fps from 60 to 30 is quite noticeable and while i don't have a way to measure frame rates right now on switch um i swear that there are a few times i've noticed in gameplay where the frame rates actually dip We'll have to wait for Digital Foundry's full analysis of the Switch version to see, but I don't know that it actually holds a constant 30 FPS. So that's part of the problem, is that I don't think it holds a constant 30 in gameplay. Another part of the problem is that, like, as I was recording the Xbox One footage, uh, and then I switched over to Switch, it was quickly apparent how jarring the drop in FPS was. And I'm usually not someone on consoles, anyways, that is big on, oh, it has to be locked 60 FPS, it has to be, you know, unlocked 30 FPS or whatever. But... It was very jarring to me, uh, and I played a lot of NBA 2K17 on Xbox One, so I was used to 60 FPS with the with the NBA 2K franchise, so it was pretty jarring, and I realized that I'm trying to look at the Switch version in, in a bubble, because it was obviously going to have some sacrifices. Personally, and I said this in my video when I was praising 2K, I would have preferred a lower visual fidelity, but... <laughs> but higher frame rates and that's not what they did and i still think it was probably the right choice because it is playable um unless it, you know I, i'm not imagining this and the frame rate drops aren't real uh but it's playable uh playing it portably is where it really shines because obviously i can't help when it's docked to compare it directly to other home consoles but when you're portable there's no experience like this for nba uh the nba 2k18 app on a phone is an embarrassment compared to what you get on switch here and the fact it's fully feature parity online play works fine um you're probably watching a bit of a game i played online i sucked and i know i sucked and that's just because i need to play around more with the controls uh, there are some slight differences control-wise between the Xbox One and the uh, <laughs> and the Switch, so I got to get used to my audibles, my play calling. I I couldn't even get a screen called at the top of the key, which I, you know really baffled me. Anyways, um, the controls are all there. I just have to play some tutorials and get used to it. But it's it's one of those things that I feel like. There almost might be too many sacrifices for me to stand by my stance that this is how third-party ports should happen. Because you had the, the download issue and the digital issue between the micro SDs and everything. And then you have to consider, now, now we heard the physical version, um, is only like 6.2 gigabytes on the cartridge. Otherwise, you download 16.2 gigabytes uh, when you buy physical. That means that 2K not only didn't opt to go with a 32 gigabyte cartridge, which could have held the entire game and made it so you only needed save file room. They <clears throat> didn't even go for the standard 16 gigabyte size. They literally went for the eight gigabyte size. They went for the smallest cartridge size possible to save as much money as they possibly can. And part of me wants to get mad at 2K for that decision because Really, you couldn't go with the standard size and just take a little less per unit sold. And then there's Nintendo side of things where, because of the cartridges, Nintendo can't eat the cost and um, let publishers not have to pay a premium to have those cartridges. Um, it's fine balancing behind the scenes, and I don't know who to blame. I don't know if it's 2K's fault or Nintendo's fault. Obviously, we have plenty of third-party games using the 16-gig cards. We have Dragon Quest out in Japan using the 32-gig. So the options are there, and obviously, uh, I'm, I'm upset with 2K for choosing an option that led to this entire issue. I mean, having to download 16 gigs and you didn't buy it virtually, to me, is ridiculous. Um, I thought it was only going to be like 10 gigs, maybe. Uh, they could put 16 of it on the cartridge or whatever. But uh, no, that's not what happened. So it's a bit of a frustrating situation. And 2K18 itself, um, it makes me question my stance on whether it is better than the FIFA port. Now I'm going to have to play FIFA for myself. But I, think, I still think the 2K18 is 
a stunning game. The fact that they got the full console version running on Switch as is is impressive. It's visually stunning. I I literally am blow my mind even when I'm watching the between quarter things uh, where I have Bango out there shooting T-shirts up into the crowd, walking through uh, the BMO Harris uh, Bradley Center, and it's great. I think it looks fantastic and stunning. Uh, there's a little pop in with some of the cheerleaders' hair. I noticed at times that it was a little jarring, but whatever. Uh, a little bit of pop in in the in between scenes that don't involve gameplay is fine. But it's it's just a an interesting experience. And if any of you guys own NBA 2K18 out there or plan to get it, um, I'd love to know what you think about how 2K approaches because I still think overall I think 2K made all the right decisions. Um, again, my personal preference now is definitely they should have went 60 FPS, but again, uh, they made a game that's visually on par. I, I didn't even think that was possible even at 30 FPS and they did it. So you guys let me know what you think. Um, I'm still frustrated with really frustrated with the install of the digital version. I'm really frustrated with how they're handling the physical version. Um, I was really happy about getting a day and date game uh from 2k that was on par with the rest but man they, they made it pretty difficult as a switch owner um yeah that's all i gotta say anyways folks uh i'm just having an honest conversation here about my experience with nba 2k18 i'm still gonna play the hell out of it um i'm probably gonna end up sinking hundreds of hours in because i love sports simulation games i love being a gm i love managing my milwaukee bucks and trying to take them to the title every single year with Giannis out just leading the way uh but you guys let me know your feelings on this whole situation and thanks for joining hopefully my voice was a little better today than yesterday and uh, like this video if you like it, dislike if you dislike it, subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll just see you in the next one.